Okay, hi everyone. Uh, this is going to be the last video. We're going to be looking at uh, the problems here for chapter 11. So we have what, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, I'd say they're all pretty much the same difficulty. Nothing too hard by itself here, but a collective a lot of uh, small pieces of information. So let's get started here. They're giving us some information. Right, so on January 1st, they had a company that purchased a van for $33,000. That's great. Uh, it looks like at the end of its five-year service life, it is estimated that it'll be worth $3,000, right? So it's going to be the residual value. Um, and then they expect that, hey, the van will last 100,000 miles. Okay, so we got a useful life of five years. We have a cost of 33, um, residual value of three, and then another like alternative life would, would be if we based it on miles. Uh, they want us to figure out depreciation using straight line, double declining balance in units of production, and then they tell us actual mileage here, right? So that's the estimate, that's the actual. Let's unpack these one by one, right? So one is gonna be straight line, right? All we're gonna do here is, Right, it's going to be the $33,000, right, the cost minus the residual value, right, $3,000, right, so it'll be cost minus residual value. We're going to divide that by five years. Right, so you can see the formula, cost minus residual value over five, right, 30 divided by five. Hey, we're looking at $6,000 per year depreciation. Right, so if we were to kind of map this thing, right, it would just be six, six, you know, one, two, three, four, five, right? $6,000 for five times every year. Straightforward, right? Nothing too hard there. All right, double declining balance, right? So two, we got to do double declining balance. Um, so essentially, right, because it's double declining balance, right, what we're going to do here is we'll do one divided by five. Right, so that's going to give us 20%, right, because it's five years, one year, you know, if we were just doing it normal, right, like a uh, straight line up there, it would be 20% per year, but this is double declining balance, right, so we got to do that times two, 20 times two, right, we're looking at 40%, right, that's going to be kind of the uh, magic number here. Now, we're going to build out a schedule. For this, right? We got 2024, 2025, 2026. Let me see if this is if I can get this to go here through 2028. Right? We're gonna have our um, beginning of year book value. We're gonna have our depreciation percentage. We're going to have um, our amount of depreciation. And then we're going to have our end of year book value. Right? We're just running a schedule here. Okay? So our book value at the beginning of the year, right, is $33,000. Right? This guy right here, the percentage, we just calculated 40%. That's going to be the same throughout all the years, right? So 40, 40 uh, on there, okay? Now what we'll do is we'll just cross multiply, right? 33,000 times 40%, we're looking at 13,200 of depreciation, right? If we take our 33,000 minus the accumulated depreciation, we're at 19,8, right? Now what we do, right, we're gonna have a little bit of a connection here 
between the red numbers, right? Our beginning of year book value uh, will be last year's, right? Last year's ending is this year's beginning, right? So we can kind of just make a little formula for all of these, right? Last year's ending is this year's beginning. Last year's ending is this year's beginning. So, um, right, if we copy down the formula, right, we cross multiply, we copy down the formula, we're looking at 1180, right? What we can do here is, right, just build this out. But one of the things, right, you can see if we were to, um, you know, sum this. as it is, right? We're at 30,433, right? In other words, we have like an uh-oh, you can't do that. The most we have um, in this case is gonna be 30,000, right? In other words, why is that? Well, it's gonna be the 33, right? Cost minus the three residual value Right, that's our depreciable base. In other words, that's like everything we can eat into. If we go right here, right, we're over $400. So that's kind of like, you know, uh-oh, right? This guy right here, 2028, we're going to have to kind of force calc it, right? Force it where we need to do, where we need to be. And essentially, uh, we're going to get rid of that 40%. Right, and if we did the math here, right, that has to be thirty thousand. Then this guy's got to be twelve seventy seven. Right, you could, um, you know, look at it. The problem here is, if we were to do round this up, forty two seventy seven, right, twelve seventy seven, and this equals uh, those two, right? Then you could see it'll sum down here to 30,000. Problem is I'm trying to get rid of this decimal down there. It's like one thing you kind of have to be careful with is the, if you start to get too exact with Excel, sometimes it's like too precise on it. So you have to be careful with that. The thing we're, that like I wanna, want you to keep your eye on is build out the formula, right? You can see how it connects. Right, last year's ending is this year's beginning. Last year's ending is this year's beginning. You just run the formula, carry it down. Run the formula, carry it down. Run the formula, carry it down, right? It's not that hard. The thing you gotta be careful with is this last year, like I said, where it kind of creates the uh-oh, right? Then you're gonna have to force calc it to get it to the $30,000, okay? So we did straight line, we did double declining balance. Now we gotta do units of production, right? So uh, one of the things here with units of production is uh, we gotta compare our estimate with our actual. And the first thing we gotta do is essentially figure out um, our per mile depreciation rate. And what we're gonna do here is on the numerator, right? It's gonna be 33,000 cost minus residual value, right? That's how we kind of keep getting this 30,000 number, right? We saw it up here. We saw it over here. Now we're seeing it here. It's the 30,000. And we said from the facts, right, this thing is going to last 100,000 miles, right? So if we did 30,000, divided by that, hey, our per mile depreciation rate is basically 30 cents a mile, okay? So we got to build out uh, the years here, right? So we will have 2024 through 2028. that guy there. Now here it's going to be a little bit different. Remember the schedules aren't all the same, you know, exactly. You got to look and calculate it according to the method we're using. So here we'll have actual miles driven. We'll have the rate 
we calculated. That'll get us depreciation. And then we'll have um, end of year book value. Okay, so we know the rate is 30 cents. Right? It's 30 cents per mile. Actual, we can just plug in, right? I'm just grabbing these numbers from over here, 22, 24, 15, 20, 21. Right, cross multiply, 6,600. If we then do, um, essentially, in this case, the, uh, let's see here, would it be the 30,000 to begin with, minus, no, that's not right, it's going to be the 33,000. Right, what we started with, minus that, now we're at 26.4. Right, we can carry this guy down, right? But this is going to have to be 0.30 for all of them. And then what we would do here for this kind of end of year it would be last year's minus the current year depreciation, 19.2. Last year's minus the current year's depreciation, 14.7. Last year's minus the current depreciation, uh, 8,700. Last year's minus the current depreciation, 2,400. Now we gotta check and see something here, right? Remember we said our depreciation can only total 30,000. Uh-oh, right, we have a mess up here, right? I mean, we didn't mess up, we just ran the schedule, but look, we're at 36, our base is 30,000. Right, so what that means is in this year, right, we're going to have to force calc it to get it where it needs to be. All right, so if we plug in here, right, the number we need to get it to is going to be 5,700, right? In other words, 8,700 minus 5,700 gets you 3,000, and then uh, that's going to be the amount there we're going to land at that base. Okay, nothing too bad, right? If you can build out a schedule, if you can just run some numbers, it's not that hard. Take it one year at a time, move down, do the next year. And once you get it teed up, you can just drag the formulas down for it. All right, let's check this out. Um, Different setup here, January 1st, 2024, they buy equipment for 115 cost. 10 year life, residual value, $5,000. You know, an alternative life is we think, hey, this uh, equipment is gonna help us make 220,000 widgets, okay? They want us to figure out year one and year two depreciation using the following methods, right? So we have some of the year digits and 150% declining balance on there. So let's take these one by one, right? Some of the year's digits. So um, if we look at it for 2024, right? Um, first off, we got to go and, you know, let me pull up the PowerPoint here and kind of copy over the formula. So let me pause this for a second. Okay, so I know that's a little bit hard to see, but here's kind of the magic formula we got to use for some of the year's digits, right? So it's going to be N, right? We know N here is the life, right? So it'll be 10 times 10 plus one over two, right? When you run the math on that, that'll give us 55, right? So how does this work with some of the year's digits? So kind of like we have 2024, 2025, right? 2026, so on and so forth. What you do here, right? It's gonna be 110,000, 
110,000, 110,000. Right, if I were to pull up right the example from here just to show you, and there, there will be probably an exam question on some of the year's digits, so you need to know how to do this. Right, it's the same in the base. Then the denominator over here, that's what we get when we solve the equation, right, 15, 15, 15. Then you just run it down, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, based off a useful life. So here it would be like 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Okay, so now you need to know how to do this for the exam, some of yours digits. <coughs> so in this way, right, it's the same, the first column. Right, the second column, right, what we're going to do here is uh, it will be 10, nine, eight, right? You would do that all the way down, but each time you divide it by 55. Right, so it's like step one, plug in the formula, that gets you the denominator over here. Then figure out the useful life, 10, count down. There we go. So if we were to do 110 times Right, 10 divided by 55, damn, we're looking at 20,000. If we were to do 110 times 9 divided by 55, 18,000. 110 times uh, 8 divided by 55, right? So it's like you know, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, right? You just work your way down. On it, and then that same kind of formula with the accumulated depreciation and the carrying value, right? You you might have to be aware of that. I mean, on the exam, right? You need to know, like, if we go back for any of these, right? If I give you a question, yeah, I could ask you what is the depreciation expense, right? That's one thing I could ask. I could also say to you, hey, here's two years of depreciation, right? One and two. Please tell me the accumulated depreciation after two years. Or I could say, hey, here's three years of information. Run the numbers on this. Please tell me the uh, carrying value at the end of three years. So in other words, what you need to be able to do for the exam for all of these methods is plug in, right? I mean, look at the slides here. Look at these things. Plug it in, run the numbers, and then look at what I'm asking for. The common sense, like everybody knows how to calculate depreciation. But they'll read a question. I'll put you know, this guy as an answer. But I'm really looking for one of the other guys. So you need to read carefully on there. Okay, so that's some of the year's digits. Um, again, need to know that for the exam. How about two 150% double declining balance? Right, so this is basically just, um, you know, just like declining balance, instead of multiplying it times two to get the percentage, we're going to multiply it times 1.5. Right, so we're going to do um, essentially here uh, 10 divided by 1 divided by 10 times 1.5. One second. Here. I, I'm sorry, that's the correct setup here. One divided by 10, right? There's 10 years, one year. So if we were doing the straight line, it would be one over 10. And then it's 150%, right? So it's times 1.5. So if you were to put that in the percentage, right, we're looking at 15%. So we got 2024, 2025. How do we do this? Right, well, we're going to start here with the $115,000, right? We're going to multiply that, right? So we'll use the 15% here, right? That's going to give us depreciation for year one of 17,250. Here's the deal though, right? It gets a little bit tricky here for this. So in the next year, right, it's going to be the starting point here, 115 minus the accumulated depreciation. So it's kind of the carrying value there times 
right? We're looking at 14663, right? So again, you know, sum of your digits, how you run this table is different than how you would run the table for, um, right, like straight line, right? So this table was pretty simple, right? Same, you know, just straightforward declining balance, right? It changes over here, right? That's what we were showing here. You got to know how that table works. Again, I could ask you for any of these pieces. Uh, units of production, right? It changes, right? Based on actual. So they're, where I'm going with this is the charts aren't all the same, right? You need to know how they actually work. So, uh, right, that these would be the depreciation expenses for these guys. Um, Finally here, assume the equipment instead was purchased on October 1st, right? So we buy it on 10 one of the year, All right? So if you think about it, right, we're only going to get depreciation uh, in this case for 2024 for what? Uh, three months, right? Right, so it's like uh, October, November, December, three months on there. So if we were to, and what do they want us to do is calculate depreciation for 24, 25, again, using some of years digits and 150%, round all calculations, okay? Sum of years digits. Right, what we'll do here is uh, in this case a C on it. So we'll have um, the, let's see here. Okay, so we'll start with the 110, right? The cost minus the residual value. Okay, then we're gonna do that times, right? Uh, let's see here, the 10 over 55. Right, just like last time. So this was for a full year of depreciation. Here, right, it's only for three out of twelve months, that yellow guy. Right. So if we did, let me see if I can get this to work here. 110 times 10 divided by 55 times uh, what, three divided by 12, right? We're looking at five thousand dollars, right? For um, 2025, right, here's kind of the, uh, it's a little bit tricky here, so just pay attention. We're going to have to kind of account for this uh, as well on this. Oops, sorry. So here's the deal with it, right? In order to satisfy this 10 convention, right, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, right, you got to do it for the whole year. We've done it for three months. So what we got to do here is essentially the 110, again, times 10 over 55 times 9 over 12, right? We're bleeding into next year, right? Essentially what happens here is this causes a domino effect, right? We're going to use that for the 10 and then the remaining three for the 9, like in the countdown, like 10, 9, 8, 7. Right, so we'll have that on there. Right, so that's going to be uh, equal to 110 divided by 10 divided by 55. I'm sorry, 110 times 10 divided by 55 times 9 over 12, because we've got to satisfy that convention of giving it a full year. Right, we're looking at 15,000. Then we got 110, All right? So you got to do the countdown, 10, 9, 8, right? We just did 10, 3, and 9, right? Getting us to 12 months. The remainder of year two, 2024, we have three months left for the 9, right? So it's going to be times 9 over 55 times 3, divided by 12, 
right? So 110 times 9 divided by 55 times 3 divided by 12, right? So the combo uh, of those two, 19.5 will be 2024 depreciation. In the $5,000, that's 2024, this is 2025, right? Year one and year two, okay? A uh, little bit tricky there. I'm just kind of showing you a situation and be aware in real life, like people don't always put assets in the service on January 1st, right? They can put them in uh, like halfway through the year, three, four, like on any given day. And, uh, you know, you need to know how to calculate that depreciation for that partial period of the year. Okay, and then we got to do it here uh, in two or 150% declining balance, right? So what we can essentially do for the 150%, we can just snag, let's see if this works, if we snag the depreciation we calculated, right? Um, and essentially what we can do, well, let's repopulate it. I don't know, I'm not sure if that's gonna work. All right, so we got the 115, times the 15%, but here's the deal, right? It's equal to three over the 12 months in year one, right? Because we looked up there that yellow portion, right? So if we do 115, right? Then we're looking at uh, roughly 42, 13 there when we round it up. That then's gonna bleed down here right? Uh, because this guy's connected to that. So that's why I couldn't copy paste it because I kind of needed the whole shooting match. Again, you can look at this, take it slow. Um, you know, it's just, you know, filling in a formula, you know, considering uh, different things with it there. Okay. All right. Let's kind of keep going here. We have a company, they purchased equipment in 2022 at a cost of 400,000. Uh, it was expected to produce 700,000 units. It has a residual value of 50. It was sold for $210,000 in 2024. Actual production in each year uh, was 2022, 2023, 2024. And then it says they use the unit of production, right? So what's going on here? They want us to one, calculate the gain or loss on sale, two, prepare the journal entry to record the sale, three, assume the equipment was instead sold for 245, and then four, prepare the journal entry to record the sale in requirement three. So we'll, we'll do just you know one and two here uh, because I don't want this video to be like unbelievably long. So what do we gotta do here? Right. First off, we got to figure out our depreciation. Let's kind of map this out. We buy it on uh, 2022, right? And then it looks like it has a five-year life, right? So like one, two, three, four, five, um, and uh, has a residual value there. But into 2024, right? We sell it. Right, we sell the asset. So what we got to do here, right, whenever you sell it, is essentially you're going to take, uh, you know, whatever your sales price is, basically the fair value of, of whatever you get, minus your net bulk value on that fixed asset, right? That's going to get you your gain or your loss. But, right, we don't know. The net book value they don't give it to us so we got to calculate this right net book value is essentially you know your cost minus your accumulated depreciation so what that means is we got to figure out how much depreciation did we take on that up until we sold it right so we know that is 400 this is going to be our x so we need to kind of work backwards here and figure out the depreciation they tell us we're using 
units of production, right? So one, we're using units of production. Um, essentially what's going on here is, right, we're gonna take our numerator, right, the $400,000 cost, we're gonna minus the $50,000 of residual value, right, divide that by the 700,000 units we predict it's gonna make, right, there, this is all just information, right, we predict, we estimate 700, you know, all this is right from over there, and hey, our per unit cost, right, is 50 cents when you run the numbers on that, right, depreciation per unit. Right, now they tell us, let's see, our actual depreciation, right, so 2022, 2023, 2024, right, how much did we actually make, or did we uh, pump out here, right, 100, 160, and 80, okay? So uh, we know here, right, that essentially, let's see here, accumulated depreciation, we gotta do it through 2022, to 2024. So let's see how many units there were on this. Just give me a second here. Okay, so if we just sum these guys, right, we're looking at 340 in total, right? And if I wanted to be just a little bit more specific with this, because it didn't happen at the beginning of 2024, that's what I was like looking at there. Uh, it happened partway into 2024, right? So we have, uh, wait, 100 units, 160, and then 80 for right there, right? So there's 340 total. So what we'll do is, right, we'll take the 340, you know, our actual times the 50 cents, Right, we're looking at um, 170,000 of depreciation, right? So actual times 50%. It's not gonna be, it's gonna be an equal sign. Right, so here's the deal, right? We know uh, the selling price, let's think about this, they sell it for 210, that's great. What is our net book value, right? Well, this is gonna be our cost of uh, 400,000 minus our accumulated depreciation, 170, that we just calculated, right? So that's gonna be, uh, let's, right, so if we do 400 minus 170, we're looking at 230 here, right? If we do 210 minus 230, we're gonna end up being at a loss here. So uh, let me just map this out. So our net book value, is 230, right? You run the numbers on that, right? We're at a $20,000 loss. Okay, so how would we do the journal entry for this? Right, well, uh, the sale So we're going to do debit cash for 210. Right, that's what they gave us. Starting point. We got to get this guy off the books, right? So we're going to do uh, debit accumulated depreciation here of 170. We're going to do credit, right? The fixed asset, the machine, whatever the you know the equipment is here right, for 400, 
So we got our debits, we got our credits. In order to make this balance, right, we're going to have to do debit loss for 20. Right? So you could squeeze that up there, but you could see that then makes it balance on here. If you were to run this you know, using you know, the other guy over here, 245, it would end up being a gain in that case of 15. Thousand. So in that case, again, you do step uh, one, do the cash, two, get it off the books, three, you plug it. But in that case, when you plugged it, it would be a gain, right? So hit the credit, it's going to be a gain. All right, 1116, let's check this guy out. Uh, we got a mining company, right? They uh, purchased the rights to a copper mine, the purchase price plus additional costs for extraction, right? So they're all in number is 4.5 million. They paid for this. They expect to rip out of this mine 900,000 tons of copper over a four year period. Right? So that's their estimate. Their actual, at least for year one, was 240,000. How do we do this, right? They want us to figure out depletion. So depletion is kind of like units of production, right? We're gonna put our cost, right? The 4.5 million, right? There's no residual value here, they tell us. Uh, we're gonna say, okay, that's what it cost us. Overall, we think we're gonna be able to get 900,000 tons, right? The estimate. So on average, right, this thing cost us $5 per ton, okay? That's kind of step one. Step two says, okay, actually we pulled out in year one 240,000. We're gonna multiply that times the $5 Per ton that we just calculated, right? Our year one depletion expense is going to be 1.2 million, right? So calculate it and it says, is depletion considered part of the product cost and included in the inventory? Uh, yes, right? The idea with this is depletion is part of a product cost and is included in the cost of the inventory of the copper, just as depreciation on manufacturing equipment is included in inventory cost. The depletion is then included in cost of goods sold and the income statement when the copper is sold. So that's a mouthful, but essentially what you do with depletion is it will run into the inventory and then when you sell it, right, it'll hit as an expense for the cost of goods sold. All right, let's keep going here, right? So uh, we have a company, they provided the following information on intangible assets. Uh, they want us to do the necessary entries for 2022 through 2024, and then prepare a schedule showing the intangible assets on the balance sheet. Okay, so let's just kind of take these one by one and do the journal entries. The first thing, it looks like we bought a patent for 700,000. Uh, the estimated useful life was 10 years, and it looks like the patent, the person we bought it from was carrying at 350, right? So that was like on their books and records. What we do here, right, for one, right, so this is going to be on January 1st, 2022, right? We're just going to do debit patent, what we paid. Right, 700,000 credit cash, 700,000. We're gonna ignore that net book value on there, okay? Um, then they hop into 2024, but let's not kind of lose sight of this patent, right? Because we have this on here. Uh, one of the things we got to consider is, hey, it has a 10-year life. We have to amortize this, right? So the second thing we got to do before we move into, like, you know, the next item uh, is we got to record amortization expense, 
right? So if you think about it, right, it's 700,000. We have it on there. We said the useful life is 10 years, right? That's going to be 70 grand a year, right? So we're going to do debit amortization expense, 70,000. We're going to do credit patent, 70,000, right? You do that, you know, one for 2022, one for 2023. You'd repeat that, okay? Next up, right, during 2024, looks like a franchise, we bought a franchise for 500,000. The contractual life is 10 years. And uh, we record a full year of amortization in the year of purchase, okay? So let's kind of get this franchise on here right we bought a franchise so what are we going to do here debit franchise credit cash right what we pay uh on that and one of the things with this right if we kind of continue in the vein here with this, right, is we're going to have to do, you know, at least for uh, at the end of the year, right, for 2024, we're going to have to record the amortization on that pad. So in this case, right, it's 500,000. We said, um, Let's see here, it's 10 year life. So we're looking at 50K a year. Right, so debit, amortization expense, credit, franchise. All right. Uh, then we have, if we're kind of working our way down, they incurred research and development cost during 2024. And it's the following, right? So materials, personnel, indirect cost. We said as a general rule, you're going to expense that R&D, right? Nothing kind of calling our attention here that's, you know, it's used for like multiple products or anything. So we're going to do R&D expense and credit cash or 380 and then it says okay effective uh, January 1st 2024 based on the new events that have occurred uh, it looks like they estimate the remaining life of the patent purchased is only five more years okay so um, What's going on here is this patent, right? We originally, you know, accounted for it under 10 year life, but then it's going to be a change in an estimate, right? Where we say, oh, it only has five more years left. Okay. So, how do we kind of do this, right? And when does this happen? Oh, January 1st, 2024. So, what that means is, right, let's kind of map this out, $700,000. So I'm just going to put change in estimate, right? $700,000 was the cost of the patent. Up until uh, this point in time, right, we've taken $70,000, right, for two years, right? So if we do $70,000, times years, right, there's 140,000 in that case of amortization to date. Right, so we do the 700 minus that guy, right, that's going to be 560,000, which is our unamortized cost. Um, you know, that is to say the balance in the patent account. All right, here's the deal, right? They say that at this point in time, we think that there's five years left on it. 
So essentially what we do is instead of continuing to do, you know, 70, 70, 70, right, all that, right, now, right, we're going to change this for the remaining life, right, our new amortization is going to be a buck 12 uh, per year on that, okay? And let's see, is there anything else here? Uh, and then finally, it says prepare a schedule showing the intangible assets as of December 31st, 2024. So how could we do that? Right, so schedule, right? We're going to have a patent. Essentially, what we'll have on here is a patent. And we'll have our franchise, right? And this is what? As of... 12, 31, 2024. Right, so this is going to be a couple years later from where we started. Our patent at this point in time, right, it's going to be, uh, let's think about this. How much did we pay? Give me a second here. Okay, so it's going to be the 560, right? This is where we said at that point in time. Then we got to back out one year of the amortization on it, right? Under the new method, 448. Our franchise, in this case, right? It's gonna be uh, the 500,000 and we will have, uh, no, I'm sorry. Where is it at up here? Yeah, it'll be, the 500 minus the 50,000. Right, because this franchise was only bought in 2024, right? So we don't have uh, you know multiple years of amortization on it. It's just like one year of amortization, whereas the patent was purchased in 2022. Okay, so we're looking, you know, the schedule 448 for the patent, 450 for the franchise. Okay, finally here, one remaining problem. I'm losing my breath. Uh, losing my voice actually. So General Optic Corporation operates a manufacturing plant. Due to a significant decline in demand, right, they're going to have to do an impairment test. So there was like some reasonable facts or circumstances that said, hey, we need to test our PP and E in this case. Okay. So then they give us some information, right, cost, accumulated, uh, depreciation, uh, not discounted, so this is going to be the undiscounted uh, future cash flows. And then they give us the fair value, right? So if we were to kind of map this out, right? So we will have, right, our undiscounted future cash flows of... 15, we will have in this case, what's our uh, net book value on this? So let me get, run my calculator here. Um, so it will be what? 32.5 minus 14.2, 18.3, right? So if you want to pause, see how I got that, right? We got 18. Point three for the net book value, and then the fair value in this case uh, is eleven million. Okay, so here's the deal, right? Remember, you said we said we have step one, step two here. Uh, the first thing we got to do is uh, step one, right? And what we're gonna do with step one. is compare these guys, right? The undiscounted future cash flows with the net book value. If it is less than, right? 15 is less than 18, then the answer is yes. There is impairment. Uh, 
Uh, if it was no, we're done, right? You don't got to do anything here. Then we move to step two, which we basically got to put a number on this impairment, right? And essentially what we do with step two is uh, to the extent the fair value is less than the net book value, there's impairment. So if we did right, the 18.3 minus the 11, right, we are looking at 7.3 of impairment, right? That's the number, right? Step one is, is there impairment? Step two is we got to quantify that. Right, what would be, right, so determine the amount of impairment loss. If a loss is indicated, prepare the journal entry. So that's what we got to do here. So it's going to be debit loss on impairment for, what is that, 7.3. Uh, and then what we'll do is Essentially, we're going to get this off the book, so we're going to do debit accumulated depreciation. That 14.2, we got to get off the books. And then we're going to credit the plant asset here, uh, which is essentially going to be a plug for the 7.3 plus the 14.2, 21.5, okay? So that's gonna be the journal entry there for uh, number two. Now, one of the things is, right, they make us um, sort of uh, look at three and four here. What's the difference, right? So uh, if we were to change this, right? So re repeat requirement one, except uh, estimated discounted sum of future cash flows is 12 instead of 15, right? So uh, if it's 12 there, right? It ends up being, so like if you change this to 12, step one is still yes. And, you know, when you quantify it, it's still 7.3. Um, so this is just saying like, hey, whenever you do the number, it's still that blue bracket. Changing this isn't going to, like changing the yellow isn't going to change the blue. Right, so that's this guy right here. Then they say, hey, repeat step one, but it's, instead of saying 12, let's say it's 19, right? Well, in this case, right, 19 is greater than 18. So that then becomes no, there is not impairment. And we're done, you know, we call it a day on that. So. Uh, that's the lecture. Like I said, um, you can pause it, you know, kind of watch, rewatch. Nothing is that hard if you can just map it out in Excel or kind of do uh, a little bit of math by hand. It's nothing you know, too difficult each item.